Hey, welcome back to another episode of Razorback Reels. I'm Adam Roberts. And I'm Aaron Emsall. And I had a pretty good weekend at the movies, actually. Uh, mine was okay. A little hit or miss for me. Yeah, well, so. we'll let you know which ones are hits and which ones are misses, so I hope you'll stay tuned. First movie we have to review is Rachel Getting Married with Anne Hathaway. Hmm. You look great. Oh no, I'm so fat. Stop it. No, you. I would swear to God that you were puking again. You know, I can really see rehab has done wonders for you, Kim. <laughs> Darling, hi. Is your sister behaving herself? I'm not exactly sure what that means. I am Shiva the Destroyer, and your harbinger of doom for this evening. It's going to be perfect. Oh, God! Lahaya. All right, uh, Rachel Getting Married is Jonathan Demme's new Handycam Shot movie starring <laughs> Anne Hathaway. And it's pretty much the title is self-explanatory. Uh, Anne Hathaway plays Kim and her sister Rachel is getting married and Anne uh, is brought out from rehab in order to come and, and be a bridesmaid and help her out with a wedding. And you get to see all the boring things that happen just oh, before the wedding comes boring. to place. Boring. <laughs> That's the thing with this movie is that it was it was very it was a very good Lunesta. Uh, oh. it, it, it tried to put me to sleep at many times, but I fought out of it. This, um, maybe you just didn't pay attention to the characters. You can't just have explosions. In That's the movie. problem. I didn't care at all about the characters in this no, movie. Oh come on! I thought. Well, I take that back. Anne Hathaway I mean, did a fantastic job in this. I mean, she's playing a character who could. have... Easily been a stereotype, you know, the black sheep of the family addicted on drugs. Yeah, exactly. Has a sarcastic sense of humor, and exactly. it could have turned into a stereotype, but she didn't let it. She kept the character's humanity going even from scene one, and she kept it going throughout. So I thought she did a fantastic job. Well, she wasn't a Rosemary star- DeWitt, too. Well, I agree. Sister. I think Rosemary DeWitt was better than Anne Hathaway in this movie, I'll mm-hmm. say. We, that's, we could debate about that. That's a, you know, that's a debatable issue, but Anne, I think the whole cast did a good job. Anne Hathaway was not a Saturday Night Live skit. I agree. She was <laughs> able to actually put on a satisfactory, you know, a good performance. But Oscar? I, I saw I'm nothing Oscar-worthy in that movie. I'm thinking Oscar nod for her. I mean, well, it's too early right now. We haven't seen a lot of these December yeah. releases, but I could definitely see an Oscar I, nomination. I saw here. nothing. If the, her name's not, if, her, if she's not Anne Hathaway and she's Stephanie uh, Goldberg or something, nobody cares about that role. That role does not get nominated. It's because her name is Anne Hathaway, and well, she just. Well, if it wasn't for Anne Hathaway, the movie wouldn't even really gotten a wide release. Well, in still, the first Jonathan place, Demme. So. Jonathan Demme is a respected director. He's done Silence of the Lambs. I mean, he's, yeah, he's right. the guy. This isn't Silence of the Lambs, though. I know, and the, and the, enough with the handicam, by the way, too. I, I it thought. Was it was, I thought it was used well in this. It wasn't like Cloverfield or Quarantine where it becomes a gimmick or a distraction. It felt Just like, I mean, it wasn't a wedding home video, but it had no, the same sort of appeal where you're 45 minutes in of there. like the, of the, the, the shower, or I mean the shower, but the dinner, the rehearsal dinner, 45 minutes of all the details, clinging of the spoons and the forks and the... That is not oh, even uh, true. You had maybe Sydney, uh, you uh, had tell a couple about that scenes time. where it's just organizing... But even with those scenes where they're trying to decide who to sit at which table, it's all about developing these characters. And you develop, I mean, not just uh, Rachel, not just uh, Kim Ann Hathaway's character, but you develop all of the major characters in this movie. Her father did an excellent job. I, I think this is a lot, it reminded me a lot of Ordinary People, the best picture winner. But Ordinary People was great. Thought, this movie had no, no emotion was, compared to Ordinary People. It wasn't, oh, come on. Ordinary People was full not, of emotion. This movie had no emotion. Tell me you couldn't tear, you didn't tear up. Not when even she gets close. Speech. Oh, not even close. On. When she finally confesses what's been bothering her all this time, you didn't even start to oh, I didn't care about these bit. characters. These characters did not affect me in any way. And that's the problem I have with this movie is I didn't care about any of these characters. Outside of Rose, Rosemary DeWitt, I kind of felt something, you know, there. I felt like she was a real, real person. And that's the problem. They tried to make these people feel like real people. The way they shot this film and the way it was written, but that's it didn't you're... deem real. But I did like the cameo by the singer from TV on the radio. I can't remember his name. As the, as the, as the husband. That no, as a... the husband, uh, fiancé. Guy. He was playing oh, Sydney, I think. That was more than, much more than a cameo. Well, I know, but I mean, he didn't have a. He played a big role, but he didn't. He didn't was able. He didn't have great acting or anything in this movie. It was. He was very quiet throughout most of the movie. Yeah, I mean, that was he was supposed to be. He was the foil to Rosemary yeah. Dewitt's character, and you could no, see. I agree, you could see this couple getting together in real life because they complement each other really, really well. As opposed to you know Kim and uh, Rachel who yeah. clashed the entire time. I mean, it was all right. I don't hate this movie. It was all right. That's why I give it a C. You know, it was all okay. Right. Maybe, maybe a C maybe minus. I could talk C, oh, C C minus. I was hoping to talk you up. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> I don't know. I doubt it. We'll see. A movie that we uh, both agree that we really like, though, is Role Models. But we got Come on, to sit down. Oh, no. Please. Dang. I like Ronnie's version better. I like how it evokes the concept and butt. Okay, thanks. Don't throw Ronnie. Come on. How many hours do we have left? All right, role models. Of course, you, Paul Rudd and Sean Williams got uh, teamed up together to make this terrific comedy. It's sort of a family comedy that kids shouldn't be allowed to go and see yeah, with you. Yeah, that's good. You know, it uh, pretty much follows the story. I'm sure you've already seen the trailers. These two guys are, you know, sort of get into all sorts of legal trouble. And then so they have to do 100 hours of community service. So they go to help these kids, which is pretty much, you know, a big brother program. And it's called Sturdy Wings or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, Sturdy Wings. And so they have to, they're teamed up with these kids. So at first they don't get along with. And the plot's pretty pedestrian and predictable, but what they do with it is fantastic. I mean, you have so many jokes that are just hilarious, but they never feel like cheap one-liners. They always feel yeah. like they're organic and built into the plot well. Yeah, I totally agree. That is, that's exactly my point, is this movie could have been gone the easy way out exactly. and have wasted, you know, just... Daddy have, Day Camp. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, like, that's the problem, I think, that maybe, like, Will Ferrell has fallen into. It's all about the one-liners and the, and the big jokes. For this movie, there were no throwaway lines in this. The comedy was solid. It was so perfectly written. I mean, it was written by, co-written by Paul Rudd and David Wayne, who directed this. And David Wayne has kind of developed a kind of a cult comedy following, starting with Wet Hot American Summer from, I think, 2000. And he did the wow, 10 yeah, last yeah. year. And he always kind of has this, these certain people that he works with. And this movie kind of was a melting pot of some Apatow, some uppers, uh, Upright right. Citizens for Grey. Yeah, McLovin. Comedies. Yeah, McLovin. Mince Place. And what I really world. loved about this movie was the, uh, the way it didn't make fun of the, like, the people. It could have easily gone after, you know, uh, the live action role players in the movie and just like, right. and totally use them as the butt of the joke. But no, it showed how the Paul Rudd character, who's kind of like this uppity, snarky guy that, make, that doesn't think anything's good, you know, and he kind of develops that, hey, these people, you know, they're just trying to find something that they like to do, too. Exactly. And, you know, it doesn't make fun of it. It just it examines it from an overall picture, and it's hilarious. I and mean, you see these guys on campus, Empire's Edge, Westmark is the name of the group. And, yeah. you know, it's easy to make fun of them and everything. But the way this movie does it, it I mean, it does poke fun at them, makes them look silly, but it doesn't do it in a mean way. No, not at all. It could have been For rated R mean. comedy, you don't see that very often. Rated R comedies are usually very mean, especially with some of these Judd Apatow films. Yeah, because everybody has their niche, their, their thing. You know, we love movies, me and Adam. Exactly. And people would, could easily make fun of us. We're like, what? I don't you know? really know how, but I'm sure. But I'm sure they could easily could do that without yeah. a fact. But, you know, <laughs> everybody has their thing. And another thing I loved about the movie was little Bobby J. Thompson. That was terrific. Who is the Disney great. Channel. Oh, he's right. great. He's been in so many things. I mean, he's been an actor since he was like seven, you know, doing things. And he's so terrific as the foul mouth, you know, little brat that, <laughs> you know, that growing up without a father. He's kind of a typical character, but he's, he plays the part so perfect. That's, I mean, that's another part that could have just been so stereotypical. Yeah. And he just did a terrific job. And it's I all hope in the he's writing. just funny when he gets older, too. Yeah, it's all in the writing. I mean, Sean William Scott, Stifler. <laughs> he's, he's not just Stifler anymore. He's this role. I, I can't remember he's his name. He's Stifler growing up. And yeah. he's so good in this. Uh, Wheeler. That was it. Yeah, yeah, Wheeler. He is so good in this movie, too. I love Sean William Scott. Yeah, you feel, I mean, you feel you can empathize with him at the same time realize he's kind of a sleazebag. Yeah, and th this is my favorite comedy of the year so far. This is much funnier. Forget about Step Brothers. Forget about Pineapple Express. I, I, like I liked them all right. I like Tropic Thunder. I like this Tropic is, Thunder too. This is about on par with Tropic Thunder. But I think Thunder, this was actually. overall well written better than Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder had some great things. I thought Robert Downey Jr. characters and that. But I think there was parts in that that went too much with the obvious jokes and, and kind of the, the cliche things. But this, I think, was from the very beginning to the end, it was almost perfectly written for what it was trying to do. Well, so I love it. this movie. Uh, of course, as we all know, Bernie Mac passed away in August, and we have two movies that were released this weekend that he's in. First is Soul Men. Henderson was part of music history. VH1 is putting together a tribute at the Apollo. The real deal is back. Now, there's only one thing standing in the way of a comeback. His former partner. If we do this right, we can get a record deal. I ain't trying to make no comeback. Well, I guess you don't care about the 40 grand. That ain't even enough. I got a lifestyle to maintain here. All right, Soul Men, you have uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Bernie Mac. They used to be in this uh, R&B group, and they end up getting back together. They have to go on this big road trip. And to be honest with you, part of my grade is out of sympathy because I miss Bernie Mac. I loved his TV show, and it's really sad to see him go. 
And uh, I mean, it's so most of the enjoyment you get from this movie is just sort of a way of sending off Bernie Mac, enjoying his uh, style of comedy one more time. But you know, this movie, it uh, the plot's pretty predictable. You, things work itself out uh, pretty much how you expect. Uh, apparently, the movie had a much harder edge to it. But after Bernie Mac and Isaac Hayes, who also is in this movie. Uh, died in August, they re-edited it pretty heavily to try and take that tone away from it. Mm. So it might have been a better movie if they hadn't tried to soften the tone down. You know, I don't think Bernie Mac would want them to do that, honestly. Yeah. I, I really don't. Bernie Mac has never, is, I didn't see the movie, but I know Bernie Mac, and I know he would never want it to soften up his tone. He never was was shy I mean, about e- being Even hard. on his TV show where he's, you know, the patriarch of a family, it was still, yeah. you know, I mean, it wasn't, didn't, Pull any punches away from that. I wish I wish I would have saw this movie, but I was too busy researching for uh, our wedding themed Rachel getting married (laughs) episode, tending other things. But I really did want to see this because I mean I like I always like Bernie Mac, and I think Samuel Jackson the combination would be an an interesting watch no matter what. Right. I mean it's funny. It's nice to see him pair up. Samuel L. Jackson, of course, will uh, be in any movie that writes him a paycheck nowadays. Or show me the money. Right. Last 15 years, I think it's been. Yeah. He don't care. Paycheck movies, but. You know, it was it was uh, it was really nice to see. I definitely recommend it if you're a fan of Bernie Mac. So, good way to be a tribute to him. Yeah. Pay your four bucks. But uh, another movie uh, Bernie Mac at least did a voice role in was Madagascar Two. Voice. New York City, here we come, baby. Skipper, we may be out of fuel. Don't look, doll. This might get hairy. It's more fun when you raise your arms like this. <laughs> the boy. Whoa. Where are we? San Diego. This time I'm 40% sure. All right, you've probably seen the preview many times of you got to move it, move it. You got to move it, move it. That preview was ingrained in our heads. And um, this Madagascar Escape 2 Africa picks up right off where Madagascar 1 left off. And, uh, you know, I actually think Madagascar 2 is better than Madagascar 1. Mm. And uh, I like the play that they did where, you know, I mean, they're trying to escape from Madagascar and going back to New York. And then they end up doing a little crash landing in Africa. And it deals with Alex, the the lion character, and him kind of having a homecoming. And it plays heavily off other movies and other stories such as Roots right. and uh, a little he, bit of Lion King as well. Even Tropic Thunder, if you think about it. A little you bit know, of Tropic Thunder. Stiller's playing the same character. Yeah, here. yeah, definitely. And uh, I mean, this movie is mostly for kids. There's not, I mean, there's, they like throw that adult references in there, here and there, but it's mostly, you know, to appeal to little kids and maybe, you know, preteens. Right. Kinda, I mean, this isn't, it's not a Disney Pixar movie. You don't expect Wally or anything fantastic when yeah. you sit down and watch it. It's just something really light that you're not going to really think about when you leave the theater. It's just, oh, look at the cute animals, and it's kind of funny here and there. I mean, I, I gave it a C, I did enjoy it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed wasn't it too. Anything to write home about. I mean, I th- I like you know. Although I think Chris Rock's on on uh, autopilot these days, <laughs> and this isn't any of the great Chris yeah. Rock comedy. I don't think he going on wrote here. any of the jokes he told. But you know, Ben Stiller, Chris Rock, they still have a little bit of chemistry in this movie that that shows up, and and you can still enjoy it. I mean, it's a great movie to take your children right. to. You know, I have a three year old son, and he loved this movie. Of course, and he the watched penguins this movie. are the best part, just like in the first one. And penguins are wonderful. I didn't enjoy this quite as much as the first one, but it was really a toss up for me. I think I like this a little bit more. Uh, I didn't really care for the the karate ninja granny in this yeah, movie. Yeah, she was overplayed. A little too, little too much there. But uh, all in all, it was, it was at least on par with Madagascar 1. Right. If you like that, I think you'll like this one. Yeah, definitely. Well, if uh, you saw Rachel getting married, it's not just her who's gotten married in Hollywood. So that's our thing for this episode. So our trivia question is, how many men did Elizabeth Taylor marry?
abbracciato la tavola? No, ho abbracciato la tavola. Letto un libro. Letto, letto. No, 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 no. Oh, it was such a heartwarming film about two brothers and a boy and his father. And... But they really represent sort of the neo-existentialist way of thinking. Entertainment, fashion, and Hollywood gossip. Tuesdays at 7 on UATV. All right, and Elizabeth Taylor was married to seven men. Actually, eight marriages. Richard Burton twice. I mean, after seeing who's uh, afraid of Virginia Woolf, you never would have thought that her <laughs> no. marriages wouldn't work out. No, no, they were such a happy, I loving know. couple. <laughs> Well, hopefully uh, you'll have more luck in life and love than Elizabeth Taylor did. But uh, our theme for this week is famous wedding scenes in movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we didn't love Rachel getting married quite as much as we love these other movies. Yeah. But we've had so many great weddings. Yeah. In Hollywood, Hollywood has never shot away from portraying great weddings. Yeah. First off, we'll have the Philadelphia story, 1940. Um. Good morning. Uh, stop that music. I'm terribly sorry to have kept you waiting, but there's been a slight hitch in the proceedings. I've made a terrible fool of myself, which isn't unusual. And my fiancé, uh, my fiancé that was, that is, he thinks we better call it a day. All right, the Philadelphia story. I mean, this is one of those star-studded attractions that everybody should see. Is this the one with Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington? Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah, no. Cary Grant, Catherine seen Hepburn, it. Jane Stewart playing a reporter. And they have this love quadrahedron that all gets scrambled around. And it's one of the truly great screwball comedies, and you really have to see it. It you know, culminates in when Catherine Hepburn's getting ready for this wedding and decides to have her uh, ex-husband along to be part of the ceremony. So that always brings out lots of fun if you know these black and white comedies well. Uh, you know, wedding with a slightly different result was The Graduate, 1967. Now there's a good wedding <laughs> movie. Iconic. That's an iconic wedding scene right there. This is what I always thought. I mean, when I was invited to my first wedding, I kept thinking, is it going to be like The Graduate <laughs> or The Godfather? Either way, it'd be really fun. One way or another, yeah. we're going to have something memorable, it's be right? Awesome, yeah. It wasn't quite as interesting as that. but No, I mean, that, yeah. wedding, that, that wedding scene has been spoofed in many movies. <laughs> we were talking earlier, Wayne's World has a great exactly. spoof on this. Uh, Simpsons. A lot of the uh, Zucker kind of spoof movies that are out, they, they, I think they've used this one before. So. Yeah, I mean, Graduate is a great movie. Uh, the wedding is the is the pinnacle scene there at the end, and and I, you know, you I don't want to give it away because I'm sure there's people out there that have that haven't seen the Graduate. Shame on you! you but you should see it because it's a yeah. it's almost a, a perfect movie from that era. This so. is one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, weddings or no weddings, <clears throat> it's something everybody needs to see. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman in one of his first real roles, first starring exactly. role. This was you know this was a big breakout role. Terrific in this, wonderful in this movie. And instead of you know instead of having someone like Rock Hudson play the leading role, they picked someone that looks like Dustin Hoffman. And yeah. So that really changed how Hollywood worked in a lot of ways. Yeah. This is a must-see. Well, a uh, wedding that you might not want to be invited to is The Godfather. 
Don Corleone. I am honored and grateful that you have invited me to your daughter's wedding. On the day of your daughter's wedding. And I hope that their first child be a masculine child. I pledge my ever ending loyalty for your daughter's bridal purse. Thank you, Luca. My most valuable. I mean, you see so many movies that end with a wedding, really build up to it, and The Godfather starts with a wedding. Yeah, bam, hits it right off the, the front. His, his daughter gets married, and I was almost getting entranced watching that scene, and I didn't even see the camera. Come I, on. Oh. <laughs> I love this movie. This is one of my favorite movies of all time, top three, top two movies yeah. of all time. I mean, it's always me. ranked up there. Every sort of list that when they rank top movies, The Godfather is somewhere near the very top. And it always should be there, too. It's, it's, it's a great movie, and, and if you haven't seen this movie, Take six hours out of your time right now and watch <laughs> one and two. Yeah. One and two, that's six hours right there. But you can the, take a break in between. Yeah, take a little know, break in between. Days. Those will be the six right. best hours that you'll spit in the last, I don't know, long time. I mean, I don't know anybody who doesn't at least like the Godfather movies, and mm -hmm. almost everybody loves them. Yeah. And the Godfather wedding scene there will be full of nice Italian dancing Italian. And, uh, and just a lot yeah. of, of favors. And I don't know, it's, it's wonderful. You don't need to go very far in the movie that starts off with this scene. So, I'm only uh, getting to see an Italian now, so maybe I should go back and watch it, get the accent really That's down. right, to really get right. it down. But you can't say anything negative about Godfather. It's wonderful. No, I mean, just perfect film. And then, uh, of course, The Deer Hunter also begins with a wedding, 1987. 78. The 1978 Eight. best picture, The Deer Hunter, and it starts out with the wedding. And, and that's the it, last happy scene of the movie. It, right. It's all downhill but, and, I mean, and depressing the after the that. The wedding seems like it takes, it's like the jungle. You just have this wedding that seems to take forever and you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. But once you get through the whole movie, you're glad that it was there because that's where you learn about the characters. Yeah, and, it gives backstory in this movie. And you get onto Russian roulette, so yeah. it pays off. Don't worry. You can really feel don't depressed worry. about your life afterwards. See, this is so. the perfect movie. You know, it has the wedding for the girls and has Russian roulette for the guys. It's yeah, like what Titanic, could be better? something for Yay. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so after that uh, depressing one, you can move on to something a little more lighthearted uh, the with the Princess Bride. Bride. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Marriage, that blessed arrangement, that dream within a dream. Stand your crown, men. All right, Peter Falk there delivering what is has to be one of the best. If probably, I'd just go ahead and say just the best wedding monologue ever. It's really great, and I think uh, Princess Bride has broken the Razorback Reels <laughs> record of most appearances on our uh, lookbacks exactly. and, and stuff. I think we've had it maybe three so times. You're now, very so. welcome, Rob Reiner. Yeah, no problem, Rob Reiner. Work. And feel free to make a good film these days. So yeah, <laughs> or, or at least a donation to Razorback <laughs> yeah, Reels. Something. I'll take either one. Either one's all yeah, right. a good film or a donation. But Princess Bride, we've talked about this movie over and over again. If you haven't seen it by now, it. you haven't been watching the show. Yeah. And shame on you for both of those things. So, see this, this is an a awesome, uh, epic wedding scene in this, <laughs> with many things, so. And then uh, w another wedding that, uh, not quite as funny as The Princess Bride comes it's Definitely Kill memorable, <laughs> definitely Kill memorable. Kill Bill Volume 2. Do this now. Can I watch? Uh, absolutely, have a seat. Which is the bride's side? Right over here. Mother, here we go. Now, son, about them vows. Bill, I just don't want. You don't owe me a damn thing. If he's the man you want, then go stand by. Now, I don't know if you've seen this movie or not, but uh, of course, Bill isn't quite as friendly as he appears in that scene. <laughs> yeah, he's not the kind old gentleman fatherly figure that maybe uh, no. you want that scene wants to portray. Right, at least not until the, the part that we didn't show. It sets up the whole blood spattered 
a blood splattered bride. He goes on mm -hmm. this revenge rampage. Yeah. This the wedding is the whole po purpose and point of the whole Kill Bill series. So and without don't even this, find we have out nothing. about it until the second movie. Yeah. So uh, Kill Bill to me is a top two or three movie of the two thousands. Uh, oh, love fantastic. and I consider Kill Bill as one film, one and two. I love. That's how it is on Wikipedia. Yeah, so I love. <laughs> I love this movie. Uh, it's great. Quentin Tarantino is a master at taking pop references and culture and blending it together into exactly. this massive epic of uh, martial arts and crime and homages to old TV shows like David Carradine there from exactly. Kung Fu and stuff. So. And if you didn't get an invite to this wedding, count yourself lucky. Let's <laughs> we'll just right. go ahead and say that. Just count yourself lucky. Adam's right there. Uh, wedding Crashers, uh, again, total tone shift. <laughs> yeah, we like the tone shifts. <laughs> so, wait, that's the girl I'm going to marry. I now pronounce you man and wife. Mother! Uh, we're, we're back on the air. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm getting into that. That's good, good stuff. Uh, and it was very difficult for us to find 30 seconds of footage from there that we could show you on television. And it was still funny. It was still funny. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Wedding Crushers is hilarious. If you're looking for ideas for great weddings, this has plenty of them. Yeah, or are you looking for good scams to, to find a girl? Oh, or, oh, wait, what? Oh, what? what? That's horrible, Aaron. I don't even know why. You'd... <laughs> oh, not. But yeah. Anyways, yeah, this movie is a great reference guide. So uh, it's really Everybody's enjoy. seen it. It's hilarious. And yeah. Owen, Will Owen Wilson Owen, and uh, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn are wonderful Otherwise pair known here. As Norman Bates. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he was the original Norman Bates, right? Oh, well, right, no, that didn't sorry. exist. Okay. But uh, no, it's good. they are great pairing in this. There's some great supporting roles in this movie, too. Uh, it's a really funny movie. I look at weddings and the, and the people. Isla that, Fisher's got her career oh, God, working yeah, out Isla, pretty well now. She was wonderful in this movie, too. I don't know too. what happened to Rachel McAdams. but Yeah, she actually, she's kind of died off since this movie, so right. I don't know. Maybe Ryan Gosling broke the breakup between oh. them really affected her career, so... Hopefully she'll get back on her again. Nobody knows for sure. But, but it's wedding, one, one wedding of the funniest crash. wedding movies. Yeah, if you're looking, if you didn't really take our advice on these old movies, Wedding Crashers is something that you can just go rent from Blockbuster for yeah. fun. It's only like two or three years old. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's incredibly new by our standards. So. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's a yeah. good little uh, little amount of uh, wedding movies we picked out there. Yeah. So a good little pie of it. Get, so. get you some ideas. I know we have uh, some viewers right now that are getting married in the near future. So yeah, so you got some of our suggestions in case you get bored of all the rice throwing and cake. Yeah, feel, free to, movies feel free to instead. dabble from all those films <laughs> in order to find the perfect combination. Well, so. next week we have, of course, Quantum of Solace, that I'm looking so forward to. And that yeah. might be the only movie yeah. that we've seen next It may week. be a completely Bond wow. episode, so it's we'll gonna see. It's going to make so much money. It's, it's going to be fantastic. We will have review all these James Bond uh, movies. I got the whole collection, so if you love James Bond, if you're curious about James Bond, turn in next week and uh, we're just going to promote the crap out of it. Yeah, so. and thanks to AMC Theaters at Fiesta Square. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much. You'll get, if you go there anytime, day or night, Monday through Thursday, tickets are $4. I mean, you really can't beat that unless you sneak in for free. Monday well, through Thursday, uh, even at night, four dollars. Yeah, so. eight, I mean that's an eight dollar date. It's a lot cheaper than even a McDonald's. So definitely go for that. Check it out. All, All right. right. Well, I'm Adam Roberts, and I'm Aaron Emsall, and we'll see you next Monday. <laughs>